I am the vine, and you are the branches. And that's what Jesus said. And I'll remind you that uh, I'm going to be true to my uh, promise from last week. Uh, this is the first communion homily, so I am pretending that all of you are eight-year-olds. And if you don't like it, you can tell on me. I am the vine, you are the, the branches. I am going to assume that very few of you grow grapes in your free time. So let's assume that Jesus said, I am the tree trunk and you are the branches. That's a little clearer in our imagination, I imagine. Um, whether it's a vine, a grapevine, or a tree, the message is the same. Christ is the source of our life. And if we are going to remain healthy, we need to stay connected to him. In nature, this makes perfect sense. Because if you snap off a branch from a tree and then stick it in the dirt, does it become its own little tree? No. It just sort of dries up and dies because that branch doesn't have roots. It can't survive without the rest of the tree. It's the same basic deal if we are going to be disciples of Christ. To walk in his ways, to bear his name throughout the earth, we need to stay connected to him. And it is frankly the job of the church to provide the ways to do that. And the number one tools that we have at our disposal in this way are our sacraments. And that's what our first communicants got to experience for the first time yesterday. Direct communion with Christ. And that's very important because without that, without the sacraments, without a healthy life of prayer, without taking Jesus' parables to heart, well, then we become something else. Something less than what God intends for us to be. We become like a broken branch just stuck in the dirt. I mean, yeah, we, we kind of look like our own little tree, but we're not. We're not getting the nutrients we need. And by the way, if any of you have, have played in the woods when you were a kid, well, then you know that sometimes a sick tree doesn't look sick. It seems fine on the outside. But once you put any weight at all on a branch, it just snaps off like it's nothing. That is what a person is like when they are completely cut off from God. Like no, no divine nutrition whatsoever. They may seem fine on the outside, but on the inside, they are starving. If you can imagine all of that, then you can imagine the solution. If someone is starving spiritually on the inside, well then the solution, you got to get some food in them. But the thing is, spiritual food isn't the same thing as normal food. If someone is absolutely withering because of some spiritual calamity in their life, you are not going to solve that by ordering them a pizza. They need spiritual nourishment. And there is a lot of plentiful spiritual food out there for you to, to feed on. You could spend all day and all night doing stuff online. You can make fun of other people, belittle them, bully them, just be judgmental in general. All of that is junk food. It might taste good at that exact moment, but there's no real nutrition there. So as pleasurable as it may be, junk food is bad for your body. And that stuff is bad for your spirit. But on the other hand, showing kindness Caring about other people? Well, you know what? That's chicken noodle soup. 
That's good enough to get you back on your feet and out of bed when you're sick. And then, of course, there's having a healthy life of prayer, talking to God, showing gratitude, being thankful in life. Well, you know what? That's a, that's a turkey sandwich. That is really healthy. That will get you through the whole day, assuming, of course, you eat the whole thing. And then, of course, there's being good to your family and having people who love you for who you really are. <laughs> well, that right there, that's spiritual taco night. That's the best. I'm assuming that everyone here likes tacos. All of that's great. So if we continue with this analogy, then the Eucharist is our superfood. It is ridiculously healthy. We can do just about anything if that superfood is in our system. So I guess that means that the Eucharist is <laughs> quinoa and kale, which are also superfoods. Um, and when I thought of that, I'm like, that is such a ridiculous, silly comparison. But the more I thought about it, the more it held up. Because you know what? The first time you see a kale chip, it looks weird. And I apologize. I wanted to get us some kale chips for like a visual aid. I actually went shopping for kale chips. Didn't find any. No one actually sells those. But uh, I knew someone that made them homemade, so they'd give me Tupperware of kale. I'm like, it's a present. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> kale. <laughs> kale is not a present. <laughs> But uh, the first time you see a kale chip, it, it looks weird. You think, what is that? Because it's green and hairy, and food isn't supposed to be hairy, in my opinion. And it smells like spinach in Grandma's house. It's a strange food. But it is truly healthy. And it's actually really quite difficult to eat too much of it. Same deal with the Eucharist. The first time you see the Eucharist, you might think, that's weird. What is that? Is that even real food? For those of you that don't receive the Eucharist, I assure you, this is every bit as plain and flavorless as it looks. It is rational to think, is this even anything at all? And the answer is, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's more than anything. It's everything. It is the best, most direct way that you can be close to Christ. Most people in the world are never going to know what that's like. And that only makes it more special and precious for when we receive communion and it makes it all the more important that we stay strong in our devotion as adults. Now I'm almost done but uh, I got one last thing to say with this whole comparing the Eucharist to normal food. Food is food. Good food is better than junk food. Everyone knows this. There's one more thing about basic nutrition that everyone understands. There is no such thing as a magic pill that will automatically make you healthy. The best food in the world will not make you healthy without exercise. Good food and exercise have always been meant to go together. So please, spiritually eat well, be kind, talk to God in prayer, come to church, receive the Eucharist often, whenever you're, you're ready and able to do so. But in addition to all of that, do not neglect your spiritual exercise. Do good. Say no to sinful things and help other people understand that they are truly loved by God. 
If you want to do any of that, you are going to need spiritual energy. And I say it again, the Eucharist is a superfood. You can run a marathon with that stuff. And when that comes together, when you have spiritual food and spiritual exercise in a good proportion, that is when we become a healthy and strong branch, firmly connected to the trunk of the tree. And it's not just any tree. It's the very tree of life. <laughs>